Good day, everyone. Um, we have a new patch notes for TFT 916. A lot of changes. Uh, so let's just dig in because I know you don't want to listen to me too for too long, and this is gonna probably take a while. Anyway, so first thing, first thing, first, the biggest change of all in the game right now is adding new four champions to the game: Camille, Jace, V, Corve, and Jinx. All of them are from the same trait, which is Hextech. And they are Blade Master, Shapeshifter, Brawler, and Gunslinger. Now, how does that influence the game? It changes everything. It completely changes everything because, first of all, the pool of champions gets, gets increased. Camille is one cost, Jace is two cost, Vi is three cost, and Jinx is four cost. Which means that every single champion pool is being diluted by one. Which, of course, makes the biggest impact on tier four and tier three. It's going to be a little bit harder to get let's say a draven or any tier 4 cost to a, a silver level you know because of that so that's that's one thing but apart from that apart from that the very big change for the game is the fact that we are gonna play with a new trait and it's, it's insanely powerful the hex trick hex tech trait is turning off items for a duration of eight seconds after throwing a bomb so basically how it looks is when you have two Hextech um, characters, one of them at the beginning of the fight is throwing a bomb at a random character of your opponent that has at least one item. And people who are in the radius of the bomb explosion, which is one hex, all of the items there are being turned off for 8 seconds. Now that's insanely powerful. If you have four of them, four of Hextech characters, then the radius is increased to, a, to another hex, which is basically like like a Trogat ult, and, but it still turns off the items for 8 seconds. It's insanely powerful. I feel like splashing 2 Hextech is going to be meta in almost every single build, apart from some really odd situations when you need to go for certain, certain builds to make it work. But other than that, you're going to splash Hextech in almost every single build, because it matters in every single part of the game. Early game, mid game, and late game. And in late game... If you can turn off your opponent's carry with three items so he doesn't get mana faster and stuff like that, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. So uh, it's easy to splash that in brawlers, it's easy to splash that in gunslingers, it's easy to splash that in shapeshifters and in blade masters. Everything here works. It's super easy to do. Super easy to do. Now, another big change that we have. Another big change that we have is player damage. We made some changes, I mean, they made some changes. The player damage last patch, which worked well, but it led to games being longer than intended and some weird cases when we when the fights were close. So we're making some more adjustments. Overall, it should still be less than on launch. So they, they're making a, a small adjustment to the player damage uh, that we have here. So how, does, how did it look before? Every single time you had a flat damage of two whenever you lose a game. So your opponent has a champion and that champion dealt two damage. Now that's being changed. On stage 1 and 2 to 1 damage. On 3 and 4 it goes back to 2. But from stage 5, 6 and 7 it's being increased to so overall bigger damage. So while you didn't get dealt in the beginning, you're going to be dealt on stage 5, 6 and 7. At stage 7 you're going to be dead. Basically almost every single time when you lose a fight. It's 5 base damage, man. It's insane. It's a good change. I like it. Because when you go for a lose streak in the beginning of the game, because you could, I don't know, you got unlucky a little bit or something, uh, you're not getting so much punched. You you will lose less, like, let's say, 5% of health, you know, which is overall great. 5% in, like, on overall health. So, like, by 4 or 5 points, basically, right? If you lose five, 5 five fights in the stage 2, right, you lose only 5 health. That's great. I mean, flat base damage. Now, I would love to see that change also for stage 3 to get 1 damage. Uh, but, you know, for now, it, it is what it is. It, it's a good change anyway. Now, another big change is the Earth Overtime mode. So, rounds are now shorter. After 30 seconds of a fight, um, you have like this overtime where every single unit get, gets a buff, as you can see here. Insane attack speed buff, spell damage, reduced CC, healing reduction, and something that I don't understand, probably something from the Earth mode itself. Increased affection towards maritime mammals. I mean, that's Earth, right? Anyway, creatures are just 
overpowered and they need to finish the fight fast. If that, that doesn't happen, it's still going to be a draw, but most situations, in most situations, they're not going to not gonna be a draw. There's always a winner, which is a good change. And by the way, if you have a static shiv, you're going to be dealing a lot of damage with this mode. All right, when it comes to matchmaking, a small change is that, which is basically a big change, that he will not get the same opponent twice in a row. Good change. Good change. Um, so you're not gonna either face roll or get face rolled by a very powerful player, um, you know, two rounds or three rounds in a row. Now, another big change to the game is the teaming trait, which is completely redesigned. We know that demon trait was always a little bit uninteractive. It meant, um, it, it, it did a very big, um, let's say, it led to a very big punishment towards players that were relying on ultimates, which is almost everyone, right? Because they were burning mana, and you couldn't just fight against your opponent. Now here, they still burn some mana, but it's not much, because they have a 30% chance to burn 20 mana and steal portion of that to yourself. If you have two demons, they're going to steal 15. If you have four demons, they're going to steal 30. And we're going to steal um, 45 when you have six demons. Now, I feel like this kind of trait is less oppressive towards other players while being way more powerful towards yourself. Way more powerful. It makes Atrox right back into the meta, you know? He was still playable after the nerf, but now he's going to be super playable because there's a chance when he has Blade Masters, right? And he has a 50% chance to trigger an additional attack. Then he basically gets additional mana. So he can ultimate way faster. The same applies to Varus. The same applies because he's also a ranger with increased attack speed, right? It, uh, it applies also to, to a little bit, of course, to Morgana and Swain. So they can ult faster. It's insane. You can sometimes ult few times. I had a, I had a game today when I was playing Aatrox with three Blade Masters. And he ults three times in like five seconds or something like that. Well, maybe six. He was ulting after ulting after ulting because he was getting so much mana from the demon trade. So, insanely powerful, the demon trait. I feel like they're going to go back into the meta, which was very healthy uh, for the game overall, because I feel like almost every single trait will be very playable right now. Hopefully, um, you know, the hex deck will not be as oppressive as I think, but I think it will be. Maybe we're going to get changed in a week or something. We'll see. Now, brawler trait got a small nerf. Now, um, when you have four brawlers... It's 600 HP instead of 700 on everyone, so basically 400 um, health nerf on a, on a composition. Uh, when you get 6 brawlers, you get 1k HP, not 1.2k, which is a very big nerf, and that's basically 1.2k uh, effective HP nerfed. Uh, but we, we know that brawlers are pretty good. I'm not sure if we're going to go into 6 brawlers if you want, unless you have very specific item set to get you the damage that you lose by playing 6 brawlers. So, we'll see, we'll see. But a Volibear, carry Volibear, maybe, with six Brawlers and a Golden Volibear, that will be something to to play. But, you know, that doesn't happen that often. Now, Ninja Trade got a little bit of a buff, and everyone was like, oh my god, why? Ninjas are being changed every single patch. But, but they were overpowered, then they were a little bit underpowered, and now they're getting a little bit of a buff. So, I would say it's, it's okay. Cannon is still tier S, and it will be even better right now, because he gets flat 50 AD and 50 AP. And when you're playing alone, a single uh, a single ninja. Now, from four ninjas, they get 70 instead of 60. So, I don't think it changes much for four ninjas, but it makes one ninja way more playable. So, a singular Shen uh, in Blade Masters, a singular cannon in, like, splashed on other builds is still very playable. And I feel like uh, cannon was playable in every single state of, of him, you know, right now. And it's, it's a little bit better now, so it's even more, more worth to play Cannon um, as a single character. When it comes to Akali, I feel like with Sorcerers, you can still play Akali. And who was the last ninja? Zed. Zed got a little bit of a buff in the previous patch, so he's still good. So I like, I like, the, I like the buff to ninjas. It doesn't change much for the four ninjas, but it's a big change for the one single ninja. Now, Noble Traits, um, they got a little bit of a buff. Instead of 60 armor and 60 MR, they get 50, 75 armor and 75 MR. Now, I don't know about that one. It felt to me like six nobles, it was still very powerful if they had a seventh 
champion that was a carry, like a Draven or a Jinx, uh, because Jinx is insanely powerful. Uh, and I feel like the Noble trait might be a little bit of a part now, especially early game. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Not gonna. Not gonna lie. I didn't play six Nobles yet with this with those new values. So we'll see. Sorcerer trait got a very small nerf to 40 AP instead of 45. Not changing much. Still very playable. If you can, you can you should splash three sources on almost every single composition that you have if you rely on, of course, on spells. Uh, but since Aatrox is going back into the meta, I would say that sources it's a good thing that sources got a little bit of a nerf. Now, one trait. What a wild buff for the third time. Now they get 12 attack speed per stack. So basically they get 60% attack speed buff, which essentially gets them easily over one attack per second on all on every single wild character. Now, it doesn't matter much. You probably will still not play like four wilds because that means you will have to play, um, you know, Ari late game. That's not really the best. Um, or Warwick, which is also not the best, unless they're golden. Uh, but playing playing um, Gnar as a two-off with something else from Wild, right? I mean, sorry, Needle is actually the worst from all of those. But anyway, it makes playing Gnar so much easier because he generates more mana, so he transforms faster. And that's the big implication of this of this change. It really makes a difference. When I was playing Gnar on PBE, I felt like he is transforming one outer attack earlier, which is a very big change. It changes the outcome of the game because it brings a big CC into the game and makes Gnar, even on bronze, a playable character, a very playable character. So watch out for this. Now, champions, a little bit of a buff for Elise. Good change. We know she's, she was underperforming since uh, her nerfs. So she had 50%, sorry, 50 HP uh, buff. So basically one or two out of attacks more. It's a good. Uh, Spiderlings have fast attack rate, which is also good. Uh, with the new demon buff, they're going to burn mana, but they not, don't gain any mana. So it's not a big deal. Elise actually got a nerf because of the demon trait. So because she transforms earlier, but she doesn't really get anything else apart from that. So it's a little bit awkward. She got like buffed and nerfed in the single single patch. Now, Kha'Zix got a little bit of nerf, which is good, because he was dealing, in my opinion, way too much damage as a uh, to the to the isolated creatures. Um, sorry, non non isolated creatures. Um, uh, but so that's fine. Vein attack speed got a little bit nerfed, which is also good because her ult got buffed on silver by two percent. So it's good that she will not benefit so much from static shift, uh, while maintaining a lot of true damage. So that's okay. That's okay. I like this change. Now, Braum got a little bit nerfed. Mm, which I feel is okay. As a bronze unit, he wasn't that powerful. Like, he doesn't bring guns. He's just he's just a wall. So I'm not sure about this one. I actually like him the way he is. Lissandra got a little bit of a buff. Which is also good. Because she is pretty terrible. But we know that she is meant to be terrible. Uh, so she now has maximum 125 mana. She starts at 50 at the same but she will ult earlier. And she, she, since she's an elementalist, she gets 20 mana per attack. So it still takes a long time for her to cast it second time. So I don't know. Still terrible creature, but maybe something will change. A little bit. Lulu's spell power got nerfed. Good change. We know that Lulu was a little bit too powerful. Zed got buffed, as I said before. Uh, two more playable stats, especially early game. He has 550 HP, which is a big change for Assassin. And attack speed got a little bit buffed. 0 0.7 attack speed, in my opinion, makes him a good target for static shift if you don't have anything else. Like, this is a very good um, base stats for static shift. Spell power got buffed a little bit as well, which is good because his uh, shuriken was always underwhelming. Um, which I guess is fine for someone who is basically an... AD carry. Katarina got buffed when it comes to her attack damage. Okay, she was always underperforming when it comes to her auto attacks, which also brings a lot of critical damage for Katarina uh, as a friend attack. So she might be playable finally as a normal assassin. 
you know? Because you can you can actually rely on her more being an attack damage character because it takes so long for her to cast her ult. So you might think about putting items which should be normal for an AD carry on her instead of mana generation, which is interesting. Now, Akali got buffed the AD from normal attacks from 70 to 80. It's a big buff. It's a really big buff, so watch out for that. The damage from uh, from criticals from assassins might be very good, but remember that assassins as a six off are not really playable because of the change of the movement on the on the map. It's very hard to decorner a composition for the assassins. So I would say that um, playing through assassins is the maximum you can have. So like a setup of Akali, Evelyn, and Rengar is probably the best. Right, Evelyn? We're gonna t tell that in a second, but in general, Eve is not. Uh, spell damage from Brand got buffed, which is very good because he's very underwhelming and he's almost unplayable on on 3-star. I had him. I have a video on YouTube about a 3-star Brand and he's terrible. Terrible investment of gold. Don't ever do it. He would need an increase of range of his fireball when they jump because it's only two hexes. Um, so he would need like three or four hexes before he gets uh, to a playable level. Right now, it's just all about this silver stats. Now... Uh, Brand Mana got also buffed by 25, which makes him cast his ult earlier. Now, when you combine that with the Demon buff that he got right now, it makes him cast the ult way earlier. Very big buff. Very big buff to Brand. Brand, Sil Brand on Silver should be very playable right now. If you have Demons, of course, and you should. Shogat's spell damage got nerfed a little bit, which is okay. But at the same time, I feel like Voids will not be the flavor of the week anymore. Um, Since Demons are going to be back into the into the pool, but at the same time, Voids will still be playable as a composition if you would like to build them. Cartus mana got nerfed significantly, which is great. It still will take the same amount of mana to actually cast uh, the ult for the first time, but he will not cast it as often the second time. Big change for Cartus. Good change. Kyle attack speed got nerfed a little bit uh, to 1.0, not 1.1, so she's not the fastest creature anymore. Now she's on pair with Fiora and Yasuo. And that's a big nerf to Static Shift for her. But it's okay. Misfortune got a buff. Yay! Now, unfortunately, not to her AI IQ. So she's still gonna do magical things. But 700 HP on level 1. Okay. And she will ult way faster because she will have 75 mana. Now remember, she's not a Blade Master. She's a Gunslinger. The additional attacks that she gets... They don't grant additional mana, not like Blade Masters. So it's a significant buff, but she will still take a while to, to cast the ult. Now, other improvements. Evelyn, no targets are current AA target with her spell instead of the closest enemy. Very good change that makes Eve insanely powerful because of the next buff as well. Eve, Evelyn, Katarina, Cannon, Mordekaiser, and Aatrox no longer cast ults if there are no enemies in range. Insanely powerful buff to those creatures, especially to Evelyn, especially to Aatrox. Because there's sometimes a glass cannon that needs to ult and die, but they need to deal the damage. So that's a very big change for those uh, for those characters. For Mordekaiser and Katarina, not really that much, because, you know, they're not that great. Uh, for Cannon, it's okay, He'll, he always travels to the next target, so it's okay. But for Aatrox and Evelyn, it's a big deal. Now, Evelyn, since the demons, demons get ba got buffed... Evelyn, you will see a lot of her as a one-off, even when someone is not playing Assassins. Ev Evelyn is really, is really powerful. Really powerful. Very powerful tier 3. Needily, now always heals two units with Primal Surge when someone she, someone, sometimes she targeted herself when she was the lowest health unit. I, honestly, I didn't even know that was a thing. Good thing that they changed it. Shivana Dash I adjusted to the better uh, to be better at kiting away from her attack target like Lucian. I don't know about that one, Chief, because Lucian is pretty dumb. Sometimes he's like 300 HP, sometimes he's like minus 20, man, and he just dashes into an ult or something and uh, in because he always dashes away from his target, right? And that means he sometimes dashes away from Assassin right into the team fight, like in the middle of it. And the same will now happen to a Shivana. So, not sure if I liked it. Not sure if I like it, but we'll see. Items got redesigned. Big changes. Hush 
no longer prevents from uh, from casting the ult, but has a 30%, 33% chance to mana lock at champion for 4 seconds, so he cannot gain mana. I'll be honest with you guys. It sounds pretty powerful. And it sounds actually more powerful than silencing a character. You know? Because if this happens at the early stage of the fight, your character will not only ca not cast the ult after this 4 seconds, but it will take him more longer time to actually get to the point where he can cast the ult. So it's a bit more high rolly, to be honest. Because the chance is, is, is less, um, less likely to happen. The previous silence was um, being cast at 50%. Now it's 33%. But if it, will, if it will happen at the beginning of the fight, especially when you play Gunslingers and you will hit like multiple creatures at the beginning of the fight and trigger this, this is going to be pretty toxic, not going to lie. But it's, it's weaker. It's a little bit weaker after like few auto attacks, you know? But it's way more powerful at the beginning of the fight. Infinity Edge got, bu got a buff to critical damage. Okay, it's fine. If someone uses this, is using this item, he's most likely just pushed to use it. So it's good that it's actually buffed. Ionic Spark damage now is dealing 125 damage, but it now probably stacks. With 125 damage, I don't feel it's really worth it to play it as a one-off. To play it as a two-off, it only deals 250 damage. Which is 50 more than the initial stage of Ionic Spark. You would have to have like three Ionic Sparks to, I think, make this a playable item. Like, really impactful. 250 is playable, but it's an investment of four items, right? This is an investment of six items, and it's three Negatron Cloaks, three AP Rods. I will definitely test it out, but I feel like. This has to be a brawler composition with like a guy with GA and two Ionic Sparks and then the other guy has a Ionic Spark and a GA and maybe even another Ionic Spark. So it has to be like three or four Ionic Sparks but then you meet someone who doesn't rely on ults and your rip. So might be funny, we'll see. Locket of, Solar of Iron Solari got buffed to six seconds, very good change. Um, might make this a semi-playable item. Now, very big change for Morello and Red Buff. They both have now the same effect. They deal 20% of the maximum HP over 10 seconds, and of course apply Grievous Wounds to prevent healing. But it's a big buff, in my opinion. It's a big buff, in my opinion, because of the longer duration. Now, you ask me why? Why? Because it's a nerf, right? It deals less damage over time, because it, it was dealing 20% of the five, of, over 5 seconds. But the main reason you have Morello and Red Buff is to prevent healing from items like a Warmog, for creatures like um, Swain, for Bloodfirst on Draven, stuff like that. You know, Hextech on Shivana. You want to prevent that. And that means you will prevent, prevent it for a longer period of time. I think the damage was okay. Maybe it was a little bit too fast. But I think with this nerf, it actually got a buff in his utility. Which is something that I was personally using it for the most. Not for the damage itself. The damage was of course nice against brawlers. But I still think the utility, the longer time to prevent healing, is way more impactful than anything else. Redemption got buffed to 1.5k HP. Good change. I think it's... I don't think I will ever use it on my own, but if I'll have to use it, it's a good thing that it, it got buffed. Static Shift got a little bit buff and a nerf at the same time. So basically it bounces less times, because it bounces now 3 times instead of 4, but deals 100 damage instead of 90. I think it's a good change. It should damage less creatures than more. Uh, it's also a bit of a buff for you as a user of Static Shift, because less creatures will get more mana for the attacks. For the damage. Warmog now can't heal more than 400 HP per tick. This is mostly a nerf to the PvE dragons wearing the item. Now, it is a nerf to the dragon, but it's also a nerf to Yasuo with double Warmog. Or Nar with double Warmog. Because right now, Silver Nar with Shapeshifter's bonus has easily over 3.5k or even more than 4k HP. With one 
uh, with one Warmog, he heals 6% of that. Let's say someone has 4k HP, right? 10% is 400. So you heal, in this case, 240, right? So with two Warmogs, you heal 480, which is a nerf. So you probably will not play double Warmogs on anyone, anyone uh, anymore. GA tooltip is now reflecting functionality does not uh, does not does not interrupt spell casts in progress or remove positive buffs and also will remove grievous wounds and rest properly big buff to uh ga when it comes to functionality because some, most of the times it wasn't working when you had morello on red buff on yourself it always it always works with your ultimate so garen got a buff cannon got a buff um who else got a buff like that I think Aatrox is affected by this as well. So this is a pretty pretty big buff. But at the same time, GA only gives you 500 HP. Which is not a lot. The creature will die pretty fast. But it's still a very playable item in my opinion. GA is still top tier. And also, in rare instances, in rare instances it is now possible to drop a full completed item instead of two components separately. Didn't happen to me yet. But okay. Bag fixes, spiderings and golem can now probably be targeted by magic damage and items, which is a very big thing. Um, I had a situation when I lost to a golem because it was immune to true damage. Graves auto projectiles are probably getting range with RFC. I never, I, I checked it once and I knew that Graves doesn't work with RFC and never checked it again. Now it might be something that we'll try. Frozen heart fixed, okay. And uh, big change here. Fixed win-lose streak gold being granted after PvE rounds instead of after the PvP round. So now you only get win, uh, you only will get gold from win streak or lose streak after PvP rounds. It's a big thing. It will actually change a lot of outcomes on the battles. Um, little legends no, no, long, no longer collide on the carousel, which is not a big thing. And Blitzcrank actually now probably targets untargetable enemies. So he should target someone else. I guess, hopefully that works. We'll see. Didn't have enough instances of that to test out yet. Um, Morgana is no longer casting her ult after her death. Unlucky. And Chogat the same. Which is actually very important because Chogat was, especially Bronze Chogat, was dying while casting his ult. The ult was visible and wasn't dealing anything. Big change. So big buff. Or, or rather a fix. Alright, that's it for today. Remember... Four new characters, very powerful. All of them are very powerful. Jinx is insane. Vi is very good. Those two are playable. So, hope you have guys fun with the new patch and see you next time.